Hello everyone, and welcome back to Steinsgate, my darling's embrace. I'm G, and we are in Kursu's hotel room. Uh, she has brought us here so that we can actually get some sleep, because the D-mails didn't work and we can't change the past. And uh, Okabe has been tied up and blindfolded and headphone, ear muffled, whatever, uh, so that he cannot be lewd while Kursu is doing her stuff. And then we have an arrangement for uh, going to bed without, you know, things getting nasty. So, on with the show! Mm -hmm. I must have fallen asleep. What could have happened afterwards? Oh, that's right. Curious who got out of the bathroom and complained about all sorts of little things I'd somehow done wrong. And I guess we both crashed after that. The lights are still on. She insisted that I wear the eye mask, but I must have forgotten. I checked the clock. It's past 10 p.m. It was around 6 p.m. when we were arguing, so it's only a few hours that I slept. Mm. I heard Curious who sigh from just over my head. Of course, she's asleep in her bed and I'm on the floor. But even the floor of this room is luxurious. It was actually more comfortable than sleeping on the couch in the lab. Papa. Her voice was barely audible, but I heard it. I'm sorry, Dad. So? I wonder what kind of dream she's having. She said so. What was she going to say after that? Why is this genius girl trying to be a scientist? Why did she travel overseas? And why is she crying? I stopped thinking about it. It's none of my business, and as far as I'm concerned, I never heard a thing. I put the eye mask on and went back to sleep. The next morning. Well, perhaps I should say afternoon, since it was already past 12 by the time we left the hotel and headed toward the lab. From Ochanomizu, we crossed Hijiri, Hijiribashi Bridge. Did I say that right? Hijiribashi. Yeah, okay. Hijiribashi Bridge and passed the Yushima Seido Temple and Kanda Myojin Shrine on our way to Akihabara. It's only about a 20 minute walk. But as we made our way through the back streets of Akihabara, we had an unexpected meeting. Uh, Okabe-san! Rukuko and... Kiryu-san? Morning. Rukuko and Finger. That really was unexpected. Out of the ordinary, in fact. What are you two doing here? The question in my mind simply slipped out of me. There. Mocha slowly pointed at a small, nondescript building. I waited for her to keep going, but she remained silent. Outside of her messages, she really is a woman of few words. I tried to get a little more info out of her. Okay, what are you doing there? The building's name. The name? Arc Rewrite? Oh. Oh, Arc Rewrite's the name of the editing company that you work for, right? Yeah. I see. I do remember hearing that she worked here. Ironic, given how bad she is at communicating with people. I thought she might have been fired by now, but I guess it's not the case. This must be the most tolerant company in the world. If I'm ever in need of a job, this is the first door I'll knock on. Though that would mean I'd have to kowtow to Moka because she would be a senior employee. I can't imagine I'd like that very much. Anyway, that's not important right now. Aha, but you work here, Moka. Why is Dukako with you? I asked for a photo shoot. Photo shoot? Exclusive. A real shrine maiden descended upon the streets of Akihabara. Huh? You're talking about Rukako? Right. My editor-in-chief wants me to do a feature on him. Clever. I know there are cosplayers who dress up in shrine maiden costumes, but Rukako might be a real shrine maiden in Akiba. Well, aside from the maiden part. But Rukako's a guy. Isn't that technically false advertising? You can't tell from the photos. It seems very unconsidered somehow. Like, wouldn't Rukuko's life get harder if this feature blows up and he becomes super popular? Perhaps not. This generation might be more accepting of someone like him. That might even become key to his popularity. Hmm. If Rukuko were to get popular, would we be able to make money off of him? We could copyright his image and make official Rukuko-sponsored products. The future gadget laboratory could almost function as a maid cafe. Might be a good idea. So, what do you think about all this, Rukuko? Hmm? No response. What's going on? 
He was looking at me in courtesy and blushing. Is something wrong with your son? No idea. Hey, Rukuko, can you hear me? Huh? Oh, he yes. Did you just call me? Call you, I did. Are you going to accept Shining Finger's offer? Oh, um, she said she wanted to bring me in to talk about it for now. And? Do you want to do this or not? Well, um, I haven't really... Once again, Rukuko blushes while looking from Kurisu to me and back again. What's wrong, Arushibara san? Are you sick? N no, I'm okay. It's just. Just what? Just now I know it's true. True? What are you talking about? Well, Kiryu san. Did she do something? Kiryu san told me that she saw you two coming out of. you know, out of a hotel. And that you guys were holding hands. Huh? Finger! D did she see us together? So, are you two? No, it's just we left together. Meaning that you also entered together, right? That's... Um, you're technically right, but it's not what it looks like. You're getting too panicky, Christina. And you, Finger, why are you so chatty all of a sudden? Hmm? Oh my gosh, you both came out there holding hands, are you two... You know, come on, come on, tell me, don't just stand there, Moaka. Don't mail me a response. Um, I don't know what to say. I, I guess. Congratulations, you two. I told you it's not like that. You get it now? After that uncomfortable misunderstanding, we felt obliged to explain ourselves to Moka and Rukako. Basically, we were only holding hands because we were in the middle of an argument. As a side note, Kurisu and I now have a pretty good understanding of how much voltage needs to build up before we get our shock. Meaning that if we feel an electrical shock coming while we're arguing, we automatically hold each other's hands. This makes it very confusing for anyone watching to determine whether we are friends or enemies. In other words, nothing has happened between the two of us, and it never will. Just had to get a little jab in there, didn't you? I'll have you know I'm the one suffering. Nobody should have to spend time with anyone as annoying as you. Oh, that's my line. It makes my skin crawl just thinking of someone that, that someone would think we're together. What was that? What do you think? We hold hands. Hmm. <laughs> so you get it now, you right? Now? Um. So are these like lovers' spats? No. no! And you're saying that nothing happened last night, even though you two slept in the same room? Well, that sucks. That's what I've been trying to tell you, and I expect better of you, Daru. Why does everyone, including Shining Finger and Rukuko, have such dirty minds? This world can't operate if everyone's thinking from the waist down. Truly a deplorable state of affairs. You spend the night in a hotel room with a girl. Everything has been set up for you. In a way, isn't it kind of rude that you didn't do anything? Excuse me, can you spare us the guy logic here? I second that. Besides, even my even if my assistant and I were the last two people on Earth, I'd never think of doing anything lewd with her. Now you're pissing me off, too. Why? I've been telling her stuff like that since yesterday to grant her peace of mind. Why would you get mad about that now? See? It's just like my Ishi said. My Ari, who up until now had her head buried in an English textbook, entered the conversation. I assumed it was homework since it looked like she was having a hard time with it. It would have been to ask... It would have been to ask for Kurusu's help, given that the book was in English, but it seemed Mayuri didn't want to add anything more to Kurusu's pile of troubles. Okay, can't do anything, mood. Mayuri, phrasing it that way might cause some misunderstanding. Can we not? What kind of misunderstanding? I mean, it makes it sound like I'm incapable of... Don't even start! Why is talking to you always so confusing, Okarin? It's so hard! Meishi, can you say that again, please? so hard? <laughs> Didn't I tell you to stop talking like a perv? What is all this? One day. It's only been one day. So how is it that the atmosphere in this lab has gone back to normal? All the stress and tension of the other day is completely gone. To be fair, it's hard to be serious when you're dealing with Mayuri and Daru. But the fact that we are forced together by number 12 still remains. Back on topic. Let's try sending another D-mail. Email? Why? Well, why? Why do you think that, that? Why do you all think I went willingly to Christina's hotel? Eh, 
Well? Because you wanted to see what kind of hotel she's staying in, right? I'm so jealous. I want to sleep over at Kurisu's place, too. Do they not remember somehow? Hey, I was just joking. You're scaring me staring off into space like that. Staring off into space like that. How dare you take this so lightly? Just because it doesn't affect him. I think I need to teach him a lesson. Listen, Daru, this is... Hey, Okabe, let's hurry up and try sending a D-mail. Uh, hey, Christina! Before I could launch into lecturing Daru, Kurusu grabbed my arm and dragged me into the development room. What are you doing? I was going to... Forget about it! Eh? This may be a serious situation for us, but to them it's just someone else's problem. There's no point in getting worked up over it. She... Now come on, back to the D-mail. We don't have to change anything, right? Let's hurry up and send it. Right. I managed to regain my composure and send the D-mail. Still no good, huh? Yep. Despite our repeated attempts, the best we could muster was a series of dings from the phone wave names of a change. Any theories as to why that might be? Not a one, but since the phone wave itself is operating normally, I think it... I think it we must be missing some major component. But we have no idea what. That's right. Bottom line, we have to spend another day like this. Even though we've gotten more used to the situation, things still get extremely awkward and even suffocating now and then. We take it things didn't go so well. Looks like Daru was keeping an eye on us. Upon seeing that we'd reached a stopping point, he entered the room. Unfortunately, yeah, and we still have no idea why. We're obviously disappointed, but the shock we felt yesterday has faded somewhat. We were certain yesterday we would free ourselves, and having that ripped away dropped us into the depths of despair. But today we understood the failure was very possible. We were prepared for this, so the results didn't have the same impact. Oh right, sounds a little weird, but I have a present for you. Present? What is it? You couldn't guess? The new gadget you asked me to make, it's done. Really? Already? It's pretty much just a transmitter. They gave me the basic structure. All I had to do was add the extra parts. So once you guys cleared out of the lab, I hopped in and finished it. Another gadget? Are you seriously still working on those? Doesn't sound like Curse who was listening to our conversation yesterday. Fair, given everything that was going on. I'm sure she had other things on her mind. You really made a new one, huh? So what can this one do? Heh, <laughs> do you really want to know, Christina? Well, kind of. Very well, then let me introduce our newest gadget, number 13 also known. I mean number 13 already, this one will have to be number 14. <laughs> Fine, number 14, also known as the Radio Jacker. Radio Jacker? When the world is that? Isn't it obvious? It's literally a device that hijacks TV broadcasts. Come on, genius girl, you should have figured that out. TV broadcast? I see, so it's broadcast single signal intrusion. What's with the long English words? Well, people in Japan often abbreviate a takeover of something like a bus or a ship as a bus jacking or sea jacking, but both are essentially jargon. What? What, really? Really, hijacking can suffice for any sort of vehicle takeover. Whether you're stealing a bus or a boat, you're still hijacking them. Jacking on its own doesn't really carry the same connotation. And based on what you said, number 14 is a device that overlays an alternative signal over existing television signals in order to stream video, correct? That's exactly what it is. And that's called broadcast signal intrusion. Basically interferes with a broadcast signal. Oh, I see. So bus jacking isn't really English after all. Next time I'm on an offline meet, I'll bust that out as trivia. Hmm. Just had to show off the fact that you grew up in America, didn't you? So what if I can't speak English? All I need is the internet and Dr. Excite to beautifully translate all the English I want. Hold on, why would anyone want to hijack a television broadcast nowadays? I should think that's obvious. So that, on the day that I, Homin Kyoma, throw the world into total chaos, my message will be broadcast on every last screen on Earth. In that case, wouldn't a video on a streaming site suffice? It seems like a lot of work for not much reward. But then only people who want to see the video would see it. That's no fun. Surely you must feel the excitement in forcing people all around the world to watch the video. Tell me you don't. I don't. That was a lightning fast answer. Yeah, about that all over the world thing. The signal's only strong enough to cover Occupy at best, and even then we can only take over analog televisions. What? That makes this even more pointless. Ha! It may be impossible for a modern woman like you to understand the romantic totality of my plan. 
Daru, there is no need to waste another word on this meaningless conversation. Where is number 14 right now? Oh, I left it right there after I completed it yesterday. Wait. What happened? Well, I thought I left it around here, but I can't find it. I quickly surveyed the development room. But I couldn't see anything that even hinted at being number 14. That's... Oh, that's weird. I thought I left it somewhere in this area. And I left it over there somehow without realizing it. Nope, no dice. Kursu and I followed Daru out through the curtain. He's looking high and low, but hasn't found even a hint to the device's location. Mary, who was so engrossed in her English homework she didn't hear us talking, takes her nose out of her textbook. What's going on, Daru Kun? Are you looking for something? Well, I just built Future Gadget number 14, and it's kind of gone missing. Have you seen it anywhere, Mayushi? 14 chan? What does it look like? Well, it's about yay big, and. I gave the room a quick once over. Hmm? Where is it, Ocarine? Did you find it? Quite the contrary. It seems like that's not the only thing missing. Huh? I looked around the room once more. As I thought. Gone! They're all gone! All the gadgets that I put in the cardboard box are gone! You're kidding! If I remember correctly, I put everything in one place in the corner of the development room. And all of it is completely gone. Could we have been burglarized? This is bad. Police! We need to call the police! Mary, call the police right away! 119! Wait, no. 117? Which one is it? Okay, oh, calm down. Both of those are wrong. Huh? Then Mary raised her voice for some reason. What's wrong, Mayushi? Did you remember something? I did! Something I forgot to tell you! Forgot? What was it? Um, do you remember what I told you before? About the May Queen customer? The shopkeep? You mean, the guy that offered to buy all of our gadgets? Yeah, yeah! Well, he stopped by last night. What? So are you telling me? Yep, he took all the gadgets that were piled up in that cardboard box. Really? Why didn't you tell me that earlier? Sorry! I knew I had to, but I completely forgot. Maybe she's a complete airhead. The moment I scolded her, Mayuri fell into a gloom. Maybe I was a little hard on her. Well, be that as it may, as long as the gadgets weren't stolen, it's not a problem. That's true. In fact, we should probably be thanking Mayuri. She got us out of debt. I'm sorry, Okreen. I'll be careful from, from now on. It's fine. People say that bad and good cancel each other out. Cancel each other out? In this case, the good outweighed the bad, so I actually commend you for your deed. Um, should I be happy about that? Yes. I'm sorry I raised my voice. It's okay. Maybe she messed up anyway. Hmm. Percy looked at me quizzically. You know, you're always a bit more honest when you're dealing with my Eerie. Hmm, don't be stupid, I'm always honest. Says who? Anyway. It's a good thing that we've gained some capital by selling off our gadgets. That should have stayed off our bankruptcy. That should have staved off our bankruptcy for a while yet. As I chewed that idea over, I noticed that now Daru was wearing a quizzical look. Hmm. What is it, Daru? Are you hungry? Nope, that's not it. I was just thinking that I may have left number 14 in that cardboard box. What? Are you sure? Hmm, I can't say for sure, but I think so. Oh. Which would mean that right now at that shopkeep's store... Er, I guess it wasn't too hard to make, so I could rebuild it quick if you wanted me to. No, we don't need it right now. Besides, we could always go to the shopkeep and ask for the device back, so don't worry about it. We've got money in our hands now, anyway. I'm fine with letting the little things go. What? Another exclamation, this time from Kurusu. Everybody's exclaiming today. Now what could it be? Hey, do you know what happened to the hard disk that was next to the laptop over there? Hard disk? No, I've got no idea. Huh? You mean the 250 gig one in the black case? Right, do you know Hachida? Oh, that was yours, Mike Sishi? That could be a problem. Eh? What are you talking about? Well, about number 14. It's basically a gadget that broadcasts the data that's been written to its hard disk. And? Wait, no, you can't mean... I might have used your hard disk for number 14. Tee <laughs> hee. Use it? Then... Er, uh, Ocarine did say that I could use anything in the lab. It never occurred to me that it could have belonged to you, Mike Sishi. Looks like Daru accidentally used Kurusu's hard disk without knowing that it was hers. It is true that I said he could use whatever he wanted, but... Isn't it just common sense to ask before using something? Yeah, but I just wanted to put it in there as a proof of concept. I didn't think it'd be taken away. Sorry about that. 
But well, it's not a big deal, right? I mean, it's partially your fault for leaving it out in the open while you're off living up in your luxurious hotel. So what if a hard disk or two gets used? It's not like you can't afford to buy a new one, right? I tried to redirect the blame off of myself. Sure, I said the dog could use anything in the lab, but now was I supposed to know... But how was I supposed to know that he'd find something that belonged to her? I could see Curse's shoulders beginning to tremble. That is not the issue! This may turn out worse than expected. Calm down, Christina! I grabbed Christina's hand, hoping to forestall the electric shock. I never could have imagined that my right arm, a wild instrument of uncontrolled chaos, would be used as a tool of peace. How am I supposed to calm down? The hard disk has data on it! Data? Is that important? Important? I can't say until I check, but it may very well be. How do you not know? That hard disk is actually a part of number 13. Number 13? That's the new gadget the Kurusu's been developing. Hashida, number 14 broadcasts its video data to televisions around the world, yes? Well, more like around Akiba, but... It still broadcasts it to a large number of unsuspecting people, then. Kurusu's face turned a pale shade of blue. This is definitely going to be worse than expected. Please, Chan, are you okay? You don't look so good. Do you want some water? No, I'm fine. Thank you, Mayuri. Hey, Christina, what exactly does number 13 do? It... She was oddly hesitant to respond. Is this something she finds difficult to talk about? But if she doesn't explain it to us, we won't know what has her so worried. Look, I understand that number 14 being out of our hands is a problem for some reason. But until you explain what's going on, we have no idea why or how big the problem is. Could you please tell us what's wrong? But... Kirsu studied our faces before she spoke. She was trying to hold back her tears. I think this is the first time I've ever seen her like this. Okay, I'll tell you. Number 13 was... Number 13 was a gadget that visualized and recorded what was going on inside a person's mind. You visualized what was in their mind? Is that even possible? Daru and I responded in unison. Mayuri merely tilted her head. It's actually not that difficult. For example, scientists have conducted experiments where they project images into people's minds as data. The technology keeps advancing, too. At the same time, research into converting what people see into data has also progressed considerably. Even the Neuroscience Institute in my old school, Victor Condri Condoria University, is developing a technology called visual rebuilding. Have you heard of it? No. Unfortunately, I haven't. Basically, it's technology that converts visual data into a neural pulse signal. You can use it to send signals to the brain in order to make things that aren't really there appear in front of you. Is that some sort of virtual reality? I suppose that's one way to make it easier to understand. And given that this is possible, so too is the opposite. But that doesn't exactly sound easy. It isn't. But there's something else to consider. At the university, I was focused on the analysis memory as neural pulse signals. Memory. Well, it's complicated, but in a nutshell, I thought that if it was possible to export our memories as data, it might be possible to do the same with the images and thoughts in our heads. What does that mean? That she was able to go from it might be possible to actually finding a way to make it happen? In this lab? But how are you able to actually extract the neural pulses? We don't have anything advanced enough for that in our lab. You don't need anything that advanced as long as you have these. Chris, who held out a headphone-like object that I once saw in the labs, this lab some time ago. Could it be? Yes, it's a headset-ish thing that I made using a VR technology. It has been simplified quite a bit, though. Which means, I was right, that really is part of number 13. I see, now I'm getting the basics. But more than that, Christina, I also understand that the gadget you were working on was going to be mind-blowing. So what are you so worried about? From what I just heard, it sounds like the primary component of number 13 is the headphone-style headset. Meaning the hard disk in the development room was just a storage device. I'm worried because of you. Me? Come on, I had no idea what that gadget even did until just now. Why in God's name would I worry you? Because you put the headset on me while I was sleeping, right? Come again? Now that she mentions it, I may have. I think I did. That was just before the whole number 12 affair. I was suspicious of those headphones, so I decided to put them on Kurusu's head while she was sleeping. There's a possibility that my thoughts at that moment were converted into data and saved to that hard disk. Which is where it becomes problematic that Hashida used that hard disk for number 14. 
I get it. Number 14 might take the data from Makishishi's thoughts and... That's right. Broadcast them to every monitor in Akihabara. And if that were to happen... The color once again drains from Kursi's face. Hey, is that data going to get us into trouble? I imagine Kurusu's thoughts being something that leads to cyber-terrorism or something similarly dramatic. I told you that I don't know yet, but it could very well bring about the end of the world. What? It'd be that dangerous. I'm done, I can't even think of what would happen. No, I don't want to think about it. Kurusu held her body within her arms and shivered. This normally confident woman seems scared half to death right now. This really is a big deal. Um, is this all Mayushi's fault? Oh no, it's mine. I was the one who used a hard disk. Pointing fingers won't help. Right now, we should prioritize retrieving number 14. I like the way you think, Mike Sishi. First, we should contact the person who Mayushi sold the gadgets to and ask him to return number 14. Right, my Right, Mayuri, can you call the shopkeep? Um... What's wrong, Mayushi? You can get in touch with him, right? Well, I don't know. What? You don't have his contact info? He's got a shop, right? Where is it? Uh, um, he comes to our cafe once in a while, so his store's probably in Akihabara. I don't know his name or where it is, actually. Exactly. Oh my god. Kurusu held her head in her hands, and once again looked like she was about to cry. I can't believe that Mayuri doesn't know anything about the person she'd conducted business with. But Mayuri is Mayuri. If she didn't think she was a, he was a trustworthy person, she wouldn't have sold the gadgets to him. Mayuri may seem flighty at times, but she's actually a good judge of character. She is lab member 002, after all. That should be proof enough. Anyway, we're not going to accomplish anything standing around here looking desperate. I'm going to go look for a store. I'll lend you a hand. Ashida, are you sure? If you don't find it, we're in deep trouble, right? Well, yeah, it'd be pretty bad. Then I've gotta. I know more about the stores in Akihabara than you do anyway. Oh, maybe she will help too. It's my fault after all. Mayuri... <laughs> what a riot! You good, Okarine? It's kind of weird to hear you burst out laughing like that. How could I keep myself from laughing, eh, Christina? What do you mean? What's so funny? Kursu was about to continue. But I stopped her with a raised hand and continued. It seems that you've all forgotten something, so let me remind you. What's the express goal of the Future Gadget Laboratory? Um, to make a lot of gadgets for everyone to play with? Wrong! That couldn't be more wrong! I can't believe that she said the exact same thing as Daru. I guess I have to teach them once again. Understand? The goal of the Future Gadget Laboratory is to bring chaos to the world with the gadgets we create! And isn't it appropriate? According to Christina, number 14 may bring about the world's destruction. Think about it, that is exactly the chaos we desire! There's no need for us to panic! <laughs> Hold up, just confirm, Okarine. Are you saying that we can just leave this be? Nobody said anything like that. But you just said... However! I shouted over whatever Daru was trying to say. However, the time has not yet arrived. And furthermore, Hoin Kiyoma's goal is to plunge the world into chaos with his own hands. There is no meaning in chaos accidentally brought about by a third party. In other words... The apocalypse that number 14 may bring about is an unfavorable situation for me. Therefore, I, Hoin Kiyoma, charge all of you with a retrieval of future gadget number 14 at any cost. It seems I've rendered everyone speechless. Hmm, I think I'm starting to understand. What? What do you understand? Okabe, you try to hide it, but you're just not honest with yourself. Seriously, why don't you say let's go look for it and skip all the extra stuff? How could you say that? I was just demonstrating the attitude we should all have as lab mems. It had nothing to do with being honest with myself or not. See, you're doing it again. Yep, that's one of Okarine's good points. I'm glad you're able to see that too, Christian. Maybe. Oh, maybe. I'm not sure if it's good or bad, but I feel like I better understand how he thinks now that we've been together for a while. Oh, then that would mean number 12 is working, right? Shouldn't that set off the escape flag soon then? Ahem, <clears throat> the likes of you... You're about to say something along the lines of, the likes of you would never understand the intricacies of my mind, right? Yeah. Whoa, round right the money. I guess number 12 really does work. Th that's enough. There's no time for chit-chat. We have to find number 14. In spite of the gravity of our situation, we managed to shake off the feeling of inevitable doom and agreed to split up and search for numbers 13 and 14. 
Or we would have, had Kurusu and I not been bound together. She and I were forced to form our own little search party. But as Daru mentioned, there may be some truth to our un continued union, gradually improving our ability to cooperate. Okay, let's move. Yeah, let's. Like now, we didn't even need to discuss which way to. Gah! Gah! It set out in opposite directions. Hey, where are you going? After all your talk of knowing how I think, you should have at least known which direction I wanted to go. I take it back. How could I ever hope to understand your Chinibyo-infected mind? Ugh. We're not exactly off to a flying start. You don't have a knick-knack store? Yeah, he's the one my Eri Solar gadgets to. I heard he steps in here from time to time. Do you know anything about him? Um, I kind of remember my Eishi talking about him before Nya. Do you know where he might work? Mm, I might if he was a regular customer, but I've only seen him a couple of times, so I don't know much about him, yeah. I see. Then what did he look like? What kind of guy was he? Hmm, let me think. He was... Tall? Yeah, tall or short, but his proportions were kind of... Fat? He wasn't fat or skinny, I would say normal. Yep, he was sort of a nondescript kind of guy, yeah. Nondescript, huh? That's not good. I was hoping she'd give us some sort of lead. Oh, but... What? Did you remember something about him? Like he had seven scars on his chest? No, not anything like that. But he, did seem like... he didn't seem like a bad guy to me. Ah. Well, that's not helpful. Why are you asking me this now? What's going on with that customer now? We just want a way to contact him. We told Ferris everything that had happened. Wow, that's rough. Yeah, but it is what it is. So if you ever see him stopping here, could you give us a call ASAP? Yeah, absolutely! What a pain. We're already stuck dead in our tracks. Aside from Mayuri, I thought Ferris would be our best bet as to information on this guy, but she couldn't give us anything. To be honest, if our well of information at May Queen is dry, we're not going to have as many options. We're just going to have to search every store in Akiba. There's no way around it. And even then, the fact that he runs a store in Akiba is our only clue. It's not exactly efficient, but there's no other way. Well, if it's the sort of store that would buy up all of our gadgets, we might find it sooner than we expect. It must be a store with very good taste. Yeah, it's probably a really weird place. Two of us will never see eye to eye, will we? In the end, Kurusu and I swept through as many stores in Akiba as we could until late into the night, but we never found the one we were looking for. Right, I understand. We'll continue our search tomorrow, then. Nothing on his end, either? Nothing on his end, either? Nope. The phone call was from Daru. But as my demeanor indicated, he didn't find so much as a single clue. I'm sure he would have called us earlier if he had anything good to tell us anyway. Curse who's been like this ever since we came back. I know she's worried, but there's nothing we can do about it now. Worrying is just a waste of energy. Besides... I had a bigger problem in front of me. May I ask you something, Christina? Why was this our dinner? A couple of empty plastic cups stand on the table. The fossils of the meals we'd prepared by adding hot water and waiting three to five minutes. I was... You didn't seem to have any complaints while the cashier was ringing them up for us. Because I assumed that we'd eat them as late night snacks. Moreover, why are you eating instant noodles while you're staying at a hotel like this? You're practically drowning in alternatives. Oh, alternatives that you're going to pay for? Don't be absurd. Why would I need to treat Celeb Sev herself? It's common sense that the people with money should pay for the food. You must be joking. I've been letting you stay here, so why don't you pay for it? And stop calling me Celeb Sev. I'm not spending the night here because I want to. Needless to say, we've been holding hands since this lovely, lovely little conversation started. Whatever. Uh, nope, that's not her. Whatever. If we're done eating, I'm going to go take a shower. I stood up and started walking towards the bathroom while holding Kurusu's hand. Wait! What? You said you could shower here. No one, but it's not like there's anywhere else I can shower. Yes, there is. The lamp has a shower, right? That's the one you're going to use. That's not an option. I meant to do so, but I didn't have the chance today. I'm doing it here. I didn't give you the okay. You're really not going to let me shower? I'm really not. Is that so? Then I have no choice. I didn't want to say this, but she's backed me into a corner.
Look, I haven't taken a shower for the last two days, meaning that I'm not... Eh, meaning that I'm going to start to smell. Are you really okay with that? Ah! We've been walking around, sweating in the hot sun all day, and I've been getting ripe. And as you may recall, we can't be more than a meter apart. And you are absolutely certain that you're okay with that? We're spending all night close together until tomorrow morning? If you are, I'll tolerate this until we get to the lab tomorrow. Ah, fine, you win! Just be sure to sterilize the shower once you get out of it. Does she think I'm a roach or something? Who cares? I felt gross all day, so I'm probably going to feel really refreshed after a good shower. By the way, Assistant, you looked so serious until a little while ago, but it seems you've lightened up. When I talk to you, being so serious starts to feel stupid. That's a good thing. What do you mean, good? Anyhow, Okabe, you're... Huh? She stopped herself before she finished her thought. What? Hey, are you doing that to cheer me up? Never mind, it can't be. I didn't get to find out what she was going to say. But I did get to take a shower and sleep. On the floor, of course, wearing an eye mask. And I think that this is a pretty good place to cut it once again. We move into a new day where we are searching for gadgets number 13 and 14. And boy, howdy, is there a lot going on. Wait, wait, wait. Do we have new mail? No? What? Oh my god, just so many. But yeah, uh, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. We have things to recover, and hopefully Kurusu's dreams won't be broadcast across all of Akihabara. But maybe they will. I guess we'll see. But anyways, thank you all so much for following my playthrough of Steinsgate, my darlings embrace. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.